Hey guys, thank you for checking out my Skeleton King commentary. I do hope you find it useful, and I do declare that... The Empire requires more bones. My neighbors have surrendered all of theirs. Who's next? Who's next? Hello YouTube, how are you? JJ Merrill here, and welcome to another installment of my Dota 2 strategy series, where I attempt to show you some of the easier heroes to start the game with, and how to play them effectively, and how to have a good time with them. And this episode is going to focus on Skeleton King, one of my favorite carries. Man, I love this guy. Skeleton King is a great hero to start out with. He fills the role of a uh, carry quite well. He's also very tanky, and he's a hero that, um, admittedly, he's going to allow you to get away with a few mistakes if you happen to slip up here and there, uh, partly due to his reincarnation ultimate. But uh, anyway, to give you guys a little bit of scope of the purpose of this video, I want to go ahead and, again, provide a, a good guide and commentary for people that are looking to get into the game that know the basics, that have played games like League of Legends or Heroes of New Earth, and you're just looking for some good guides to get started with heroes that can ease you into uh, the Dota 2 play style, because there's a lot of things that are quite different from League of Legends, and these differences can be pretty marked as you develop as a player. So I'm going to go ahead and comment on what I noticed during the game, provide my thoughts on it, and hopefully it'll help some of you guys out there. So all that being said, this episode is going to focus on Skeleton King, and uh, I want to go ahead and talk about the lane matchups we're going to have first off, then I'm going to go into his skills, and then probably get and go into the item build that we're going to set up. So this particular game, we have myself and a Tidehunter in the uh, in the hard lane, bottom lane. We have a Ricky and Axe in the uh, long lane up top, and we have a Necrolite mid. This is kind of an odd setup in a in a way. Um, like I usually don't see Axe go as more of the support role. Uh, I, I don't see that very often at all, actually. He's not jungling, so keep that in mind. He's uh, there to support the Ricky. Um, Tidehunter and Skeleton King, I actually really like. I have a completely unavoidable stun, and Tidehunter slow and armor reduction is going to come in handy. Tidehunter works well with just about anybody, to be honest, so I definitely don't mind this lane matchup. Now, um, the lanes that we're up against, uh, we are up against an Ursa and a Morana bottom. This is actually pretty deadly, I have to admit, and uh, if I remember correctly, I actually get... Uh, First blooded here shortly to show you just how lethal this can be. Uh, actually, there it is right there. So you can see I took an immense amount of damage right off the bat at level one. I did not see that coming. That was a huge mistake by me. I vastly underestimated the amount of damage that the Ursa and the Miranda could do to me, and I paid for it. Now, that being said, so I don't fall behind any more than that's already going to put us, I decided to go ahead and teleport back down to the bottom lane. I want to go ahead and make sure that they don't gain too much of an advantage from this. This is a terrible lane setup, by the way. You do not want to have two carries in the lane together. Reason being is these guys are ultimately going to be fighting over their CS. And all that being said, they're probably going to have half as much farm as I am. That is, if I don't feed them. That's why me getting first blooded there was a really, really huge mistake. It's actually making what they're doing not a bad thing, because they were able to get the gold and the XP off of killing me, thus kind of negating the fact that their lane setup is inherently pretty bad, if that makes sense. So, anyway, um, you might be wondering what my starting items were. I'd really like to pick up a Soul Ring recipe right in base. I know some of you guys might be thinking, well, why the hell are you doing that? I'll explain why I like to do this on Skeleton King. Reason being is I can pick up the other two components to finish the Soul Ring directly from the side shop. Soul Ring is a really good item on Skeleton King. Uh, really, really good, actually. And uh, as I gain in levels here and show you the build I like to go for, hopefully that'll become clear as to why I like to do this. I also pick up a Quelling Blade to help with my last hitting. This is really worth it, guys. Don't worry about the people that say, well, Quelling Blade is a crutch. You, you don't need it if you know how to last hit properly. That's absolute nonsense. Quelling Blade is really helpful. Pick it up on guys like Skeleton King. It is a great item. The better you can last hit, the more effective you're going to be as the game goes on. So definitely pick this up on a lot of melee carries. It's really going to help you out. Um, I pick up, you know, a standard region, a Tango, and a Salve. And... Excuse me, with the money I left over, I pick up an Iron Branch just for the hell of it, to pad my stats a bit. Uh, skill build. Very, very important on Skeleton King. I do want to talk about this in depth a bit. At level 1, I do pick up my Hellfire Blast, which is his uh, unavoidable targeted stun that has a, a two-second stun duration, does a little bit of slow over time. Uh, really good ability. Fairly high mana cost, though. 
At earlier levels, you're not going to be able to spam this ability. This is one of the reasons why I get Soul Ring. There's a couple other reasons I get it too, but we're going to get into that as I pick up the item. But uh, I pick this up at level 1. Then at level 2, I pick up a level of stats. I'm going to go ahead and explain why I do this. His second ability, his lifesteal, is a percentage-based lifesteal that uh, goes up by 5% per level. Scaling on this is quite poor. 15% for one level is pretty good, but um, I actually, uh, Purge explained this a lot better than I possibly could. Uh, he used the, the term, like, say you're doing 60 damage per hit. I'm doing 63 damage per hit right now. If I'm getting 15% lifesteal, that's what an average of a little over 6 life per hit, maybe around 7-ish life per hit. That's nothing. So this ability is not going to do anything for me if I pick this up earlier on. Because I'm not going to be in here and auto-attacking the creeps anyway. I don't want to do that. I don't want to push this lane, especially against such a deadly lane matchup as Mirana and Ursa. If Mirana gets off one arrow off of me, this means that Ursa is going to be able to come in, use his overpower ability and his fury swipes. He's going to kill me quick, as you already saw him do. I got first blooded at level 1. So... Do not pick this up at earlier levels. You are doing yourself a major disservice if you do so. His Critical Strike is a good ability, but again, this is percentage-based. Same exact concept is why I don't pick up the Lifesteal early as well. So these two abilities, I don't pick up until quite a bit later. Uh, both of its dodge, the Mirana Arrow, thankfully that could have been really, really bad. Again, if she gets off an arrow on probably either of us, we are dead. We cannot let that happen. This is actually a really, really dangerous lane setup, because if Ursa is able to come in here, and uh, get just even like a second and a half or two seconds of uh, attacks off on us, we're probably going to die. So, uh, I pick up another level of stats at level 4. The stats are great. They, like, just because you're not skilling an ability, don't feel bad about that. Stats are really going to help you out. Notice that with just my soul ring and my stat CR right now, my HP regen is really, really high for only having a soul ring, an ironwood branch, and my stat level is really helping this out quite a bit. So I do finish my soul ring. I'm going to talk about this a bit. So the soul ring is going to give me some pretty decent HP regen, as you can see here. Give me some good mana regen. It's going to let me do this. It's going to allow me to possibly harass these guys out of lane. I noticed right away that the Ursa picked up a Ring of Region right off the bat. I really don't like this decision. This is actually quite bad. Uh, this is not going to give him enough Region if this were like a lane setup where we were able to harass him better. Maybe I had a rain support instead of both of us being melee. Um, Ursa would be out of lane in no time. I can absolutely guarantee that. This is a terrible starting item choice. I really don't like this. Um, if any of you guys out there disagree with me, uh, please post in the comment section and tell me why. Because if I'm wrong, I would like to know why, but I really, really don't like this decision. Uh, the Mirana, this is pretty standard stuff here. I don't like the fact that she picked up a bottle this early. This doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, her mid lane is going to be less than probably going to be getting these bo Invisibility. bottle charges anyway, so I don't really agree with this too much. Uh, the other items, that's perfectly fine. Uh, I do pop a soul ring to get a little bit more harass on the Ursa. This might be a slight mistake. I'm fairly low and I'm completely out of region at this point. I did have to pop my very last tango. So I might be going a bit too aggressive with using the soul ring here. If you guys aren't familiar with how soul ring works, I'm able to use this to consume 150 HP to temporarily gain 150 mana. What this means is that if my mana pool is down a bit, I can use this and effectively get a free Hellfire Blast out of it. If my HP regen is high enough to compensate for it, or if I have the HP region items to make up for the, the soul ring hit. Really good item on Skeleton King. It might not seem that way at first, but it really is. I really like having this item. And against a lane matchup like this, I want to be able to try to harass the Ursa or the Mirana out of lane. Um, I do make a, quite a few mistakes in the, the way that I go about doing this, which I'll talk about as the game goes on. And to supplement this build, I'm going to go ahead and pick up probably a ring of health. That's probably, yeah, I'm, I'm going to pick up a ring of health right away. Look at my HP regen. I'm able to regen almost close to 10 HP per second by having this build. And I'm barely, I'm just not even level 6 yet. I can regen back up to full in pretty much no time. This means I'm going to be able to use my soul ring with impunity. I don't really have to worry too much about that 150 uh, HP hit because I'm going to be able to gain that back in about 15 seconds. That's not really a whole lot. And if I'm not in a dangerous situation where I really have to worry about my HP all that much, I'm going to be able to pop off a lot of Hellfire Blasts, probably even get some kills out of it. Ultimately, what I'm looking to do is I want to punish these guys for making the poor lane decisions that they did. I want to force one or even both of them out of lane. If we can get a kill from it, that's even better. For the time being, though, 
what I'm focusing on doing is trying to get as many last hits up as I possibly can. I've not been last hitting as well as I possibly could this game. Uh, it hasn't been too bad, but these guys, uh, again, if a Miranda arrow lands uh, on either of us, we're probably dead. It's going to be really, really bad. If I can react fast enough and maybe get off a Hellfire Blast on the Ursa to allow one of us to escape, possibly, but if I'm the one that gets stunned, that's going to be nasty. The Tide Hunter is really, really hanging back this game. By the way, this is his first game as Tide Hunter, so don't judge too harshly. I don't want to see anyone making fun of him in the comments. This is his very first game of Tide Hunter, so he's still learning how to play the hero. He's playing very, very conservatively, which honestly, I don't mind. That's just fine. He gets his type of lane, because if he gets uh, arrowed, he's going to be in a bad situation. He's pretty tanky, but... I, I I really don't want to get arrowed here. That's going to be really disastrous if either of us do. Um, what I just did was a mistake. Notice I used my soul ring whenever I was already at full mana. Completely pointless. I just threw away HP for absolutely nothing because my mana was already at full. So, yeah, you don't have to do that. <laughs> there's Yeah, there's really no point in doing that. So, well, I mean... That being said, it, it does give you a temporary boost in mana, but... You know, actually, I, I take that back. But what I just did there is fine because I have enough region that honestly, it doesn't matter. It really so I, I just kind of put my foot in my mouth with that commentary. But uh, again, I want to make sure that I tell you guys the right things to do, and I don't guide you down the wrong path. So I'm throwing out Hellfire Blast as often as I can on the Ursa. Um, I did make a bit of a mistake here. I should probably be doing this on the Morana instead. She's going to go down a lot more quickly than the Ursa. She has no region whatsoever aside from her bottle. Notice too that these guys are both sticking on agility on agility treads, and not uh, the Ursa should be on strength tre treads right now to get his. Uh, HP regen back up. Right now it's not as important because he did pick up Ring of Health. This is actually a smart decision because with all the harass I'm throwing out on these guys, he's going to be able to effectively counter this by picking up a Ring of Health and a Ring of Regen at the same time. So this was actually kind of a smart decision. Uh, I don't... I think not. I still don't agree with picking up the Ring of Regen that early, but that's okay. So I do have level 6, I have my reincarnation ability. Uh, this is Skeleton King's ultimate. Basically, uh, if you die, you come back to life. That's about all there is to be said to it. So uh, Ursa does come in, he pops his Fury Swipes, they're going aggressive on me. I do die, but it's okay, because I'm Skeleton King. <laughs> uh, now, me dying there was still a mistake. I, I don't want to encourage a sloppy play or dying for no reason, because this has a 260 second cooldown at level 1. That's a really long time. And also, it has a 140 mana cost. If I have below 140 mana, this isn't going to trigger if I die. That's something you really got to keep in mind. So what I did there was absolutely a mistake. Uh, just because I came back to life and they didn't get any real, you know, they didn't get a kill out of it, does not mean it still wasn't a big mistake and it could cost me later. Something really important to keep in mind. So... Everything's still going pretty well so far. I'm just trying to last hit as I, as I keep going here. I've seen a lot of last hits, by the way, that I could have gotten. So I definitely could be last hitting a little bit better here. Let's take a look at that now. So if I take a look at the graphs, looks like right now um, I have a 44 last hits, 3 denies, Ursa with 28. Uh, I thought we were, might go aggressive there, but that's okay. Ursa with a 28 and the Miranda with 23. So like I said before, these guys effectively have half the farm that I do. This is going to have a huge effect on the later game as it approaches. Now, Ursa is more of a hard carry, so the farm for him is going to be a lot more important. Uh, Miranda kind of comes into a semi-carry role. So this isn't going to affect her as badly, but still, she needs items to be effective. Her arrow is kind of the one exception to this. Her arrow's utility is going to be really strong regardless of... Uh, whatever farm she has in the game, but she's not going to be able to adopt a semi-carry role if she does not have the farm that she needs. Um, I do go back to the secret shop. Uh, the Tide Hunter made a bit of a mistake here. He didn't need to follow me. He should have stayed and defended the tower. So the tower did take some unnecessary damage. That was a mistake there. It took uh, a few hundred HP worth of damage, and that's kind of a bad thing, because if one of us die here, they have the chance to push this tower down. I really don't want that to happen. I pick up a Vitality Booster. I have the intention of building a uh, Vanguard as soon as I can. I want to go ahead and pick up a Vanguard here because I feel the extra tankiness is really going to be helpful for me. Uh, adapt your build as you're playing. Don't follow just a cookie cutter thing. I don't build Vanguard all the time on Skeleton King, but I felt that this game with the Morana and the Ursa in the bottom lane, and there's a Slaughter in the game as well. He, I'm not as worried about him, but uh, these two I am worried about, and these are the two I'm laning against. I want to go and make sure I pick up some tankiness. 
to make sure that if I do happen to get caught, or if we do go aggressive on these guys, I'm not just going to throw my life away. Really important things to keep in mind. Sometimes your damage is not the primary thing you need to be worried about. So yet again, just trying to last it under the tower. By the way, this this will come in time, guys. Like you'll learn to last it under the tower. Watch players that have played for a while and just kind of watch how they do it, and you'll get you'll get you'll get the feel for it over time. So don't worry about that. So everything's still going pretty well so far. Um, throwing out some more harass on the Ursa. This I don't like how I'm doing this because again the Ursa is just going to regenerate this. I should be focusing on the Moran instead. I need to force her out of lane. She only has one bottle charge left. That's it. She has no other region whatsoever. There's absolutely no reason that I shouldn't be trying to harass this Moran out of lane. This was a big mistake on my part, and the game probably could have went a lot more smoothly if I did. Because uh, right now. Uh, we're doing okay. Uh, this is a mistake too. Uh, I didn't need to buy the stout shield from the regular shop. Uh, Could have pushed the lane out. Uh, we got Necrolite coming in for a gank. Uh, Tide pops his Ravage, which is uh, might have been a little overkill, but uh, that's okay in the heat of the moment. We got the kill. Uh, Necrolite came in with a double damage. Really good play by him. Came in, picked off the Ursa. That's going to get us back on our feet. That's really, really going to help us out. So this is going to allow me to farm without any issues whatsoever, and I can keep the Miranda away as well. So I might, I really should go aggressive on her here. She's close enough. I could pop off a Hellfire Blast and probably walk up under and do quite a bit of damage. So let's see if I do that. I should, yep, there's a Soul Ring pop. I come in through the Hellfire Blast on her, throw in some hits. He's going to get a good gush off, and Miranda does go down. Good gush by the Titan Hunter. Uh, really good reaction time by him. That's super important, guys. Whenever you see your ally going in like that, make sure you follow up and try to help him out if you can. Uh, all these guys in this game, I, uh, actually, I don't know uh, the Ricky and the Axe, but the Necrolite and the Tidehunter I do know, so we three-man queued this game. I have those guys on voice chat. It's kind of a shame that the Dota 2 replayer doesn't capture voice chat. I really wish it did. Uh, I, I use voice chat a lot. I'm going to talk about that a bit more as uh, the video goes on, the importance of communicating with your team, and just good things you can do you know, to kind of be uh, effective in doing that. But it, uh, whenever that situation happened, I believe, you know, I called out specifically, you know, come down, gush the Mirana, we can get a kill. The Mirana made a huge mistake there, by the way. She could have easily leaped away from that gush, but she didn't do so. I don't know why. Uh, her leap was not on cooldown, so I don't understand her play there whatsoever. I have no idea. Um, I picked up boots a few minutes ago. Standard item. Definitely want to have it. Matter of fact, um, it's arguable that I should have picked this up earlier, especially due to Miranda having her arrow. I need the speed to be able to dodge that. And uh, the Ursa, I don't want to get caught by his Fury Swipes and his Overpower proccing on me. That's definitely a bad thing. So I'm going uh, to complete my Vanguard, and I'm also going for a Phase Boots right now. So I need a little bit more mana for my second Blades of Attack to complete my Phase Boots. Uh, things are going pretty well now. Uh, the Necrolite coming in for that gank was actually a huge help. And it looks like Ursa has taken to the jungle, which I'm perfectly fine with. That's going to leave Miranda totally alone in the lane. And she's probably not going to be able to get the last hits. She's going to be able to get the solo EXP, which is actually a pretty good thing for them. But she's not going to be able to get the farm that she needs. So I do pop my soul ring, come in, pop off a stun, and again, she's not leaping away from this. I don't understand why. I make a mistake here. Ty Henry gets off his gush. If I would have followed up on that, I would have been able to pop up another Hellfire Blast and uh, very likely get a kill. The reason I did not follow up on that is because I assumed that the Miranda was going to leap. There is no reason that she uh, should not have leapt away from our damage there. I don't understand why she's not doing that. But... I think I remembered that she didn't do that, so now I know I'm going to go aggressive on her yet again. Get in some good hits. I need a great gush by the Titan Hunter once again. She pops her ultimate, but it's not going to be enough. I do get the last hit, and she goes down. So again, uh, the, the Tide Hunter, while he's uh, definitely new at playing the champion, he's following up and he's reacting appropriately. Uh, his skill build, by the way, is uh, kind of awkward. Uh, maxing Gush is definitely correct. I don't like picking up a second level in Kraken Shell until uh, quite late in the game. I, will, I like to m maximize my Anchor Smash right after that. Maybe even pick up stat levels before Kraken Shell. So just a few things to keep in mind there. Uh, I do have my uh, Vanguard and Phase Boots coming down to me. Go ahead and pick that up. This is a good chance for me to talk about items that I like to build on Skeleton King. I feel, excuse me, that uh, Soul Ring, in most situations, especially if you have a healing support, is core on this character. You might not think that given he only has one active ability, but Soul Ring is overpowered, guys. It is such a good item. It is 
Uh, it's not just reserved for characters like uh, Omni Nine and Broodmother. Soul Ring is incredibly good. So uh, we have Ricky coming out for a gank. I do stun them around, and he blinks in, throws down the cloud. Really good play by him. Uh, even if she did want to lead the way, which honestly I don't know if she would have, but the uh, cloud's silence is going to prevent her from doing so. Uh, so really good play by the Ricky. I like that gank. That worked out really well for us, and we managed to take the tower. Really, really good stuff. Back to the items I like to build on Skeleton King. Um, it's arguable that power treads are better for this guy, but I'll tell you why I like face boots. Because when I pop that Hellfire Blast, I need to close the gap as soon as I possibly can. I've even seen some players build a Force Staff on Skeleton King specifically for that reason. They want to be able to close the gap as quickly as they can and get in and do some damage. I haven't tried that yet, so I really can't give my opinion of it, but uh, phase boots are great. It, this is not, if it is a mistake, it's not a big mistake. This is my preferred item over power treads at this point. Good movement speed, uh, quite a bit of extra damage too. That plus 24 damage is not negligible, especially at this point in the game. So you know, it's adding an extra 24 on top of my base 86. That's actually quite good. Uh, Vanguard, this was... I think this was a really good pickup this game for the reasons I stated earlier, especially against the Ursa and the Morana harassing me. I like the health, I like the met, the HP regen, the block chances, all really, really good stats to have here. Uh, I am going to go for an armlet next, so I go and pick up the Helm of the Iron Will, which is going to give me more armor and yet again more HP regeneration. I am really, really tanky right now. Even if these guys do manage to take me out, it's going to proc my reincarnation, and I'm probably going to be able to make it out in most situations unless I get, like, four-man ganked or something, you know? I come in for a gank on the Morana. Uh, she's actually going to leap away and dodge my stun. I saw that the Ricky was waiting in the sidelines here, so if I got a stun off, he was going to be able to blink in, pop his smoke cloud, and we probably would have gotten another kill there. So the Morana is actually learning to uh, use her leap ability, so good on her for doing that. I go ahead and pick up the recipe for the armlet. The reason I pick up the recipe first is because right now I'm... I'm pretty satisfied with the way my inventory is. I don't want to clear up my uh, Ironwood branch for anything other than Town Portal Scroll at the moment. I want to make sure I can have a TP scroll me at all times if I possibly can. That's really, really important, guys. Um, that This is one thing that's kind of different from League of Legends, is in League of Legends, you didn't have to worry about this too much. You know, you didn't have to worry about... Uh, Am I going to have the ability to travel across the map instantly? Well, you couldn't. There was no way to do that. But in uh, Dota 2, this is super important. You want to have a TP scroll on you, or I prefer to have two TP scrolls pretty much at all times on most all characters. you got to be able to teleport around that map. And the reason that I teleported up here is because there was nobody farming this lane whatsoever. The axe was just coming back into the lane, but I saw there's a lot of creeps here. Our lane has already been pushed out. The tower's down. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to farm. And the axe can very easily go into the jungle, which is exactly what he did. So this works out the best for the entire team. It looks like I'm now going to be up against the dual lane of Slardar and Dazzle. Not really too scared of this. Uh, Dazzle... Uh, Dazzle had, you know, has his slow poison, not really too concerned. Slardar does have his AoE stun and his dash ability to close the gap on me. I have the phase boost to counter that, so if he does try to rush up on me, I'm probably going to be able to run away from it without having to worry too much. So this lane is going just fine so far. Again, just trying to get my last hits. And uh, he does pop off his stun, completely misses. That was a mistake by him. Uh, I'm not able to do a whole lot of damage yet, but that's going to come. I'd use my Soul Ring. I go a little bit aggressive on the Dazzle, but I decide to back up. I really don't want the Slardar engaging on me too heavily for the main reason that uh, at this point I didn't have vision on the Ursa. I didn't know if maybe he was up here, and I really wasn't paying a whole lot of attention to the mid lane, so I thought I kind of don't want to get ganked. You know, I, I don't want to get have the Miranda come in and arrow me or some nonsense like that. Uh, the Dazzle's way too close. I'm going to go aggressive on him, pop my phase boots, and... Uh, one thing you might notice me doing that's really, really important is I'm attack moving after every attack. I'm going to talk about that more in later videos, but as you play the game, you're going to learn the concepts like animation canceling, um, orb walking, uh, attack moving. Don't worry about that stuff a whole lot if you're brand new to the game. Just focus on the core fundamentals and get that down first, then worry about all the fancy stuff later. So don't worry about that. Uh, Miranda does get off a su successful arrow here. I'm very likely going to die. Slardar stun going down. He gets off a bash as well, but I'm Skeleton King. I don't give a damn. <laughs> I'm going to resurrect. I'm going to be able to run back. No problem. I notice my whole team is coming in here. I'm going to go aggress some of these guys. Tidehunter coming in. He's going to use his Ravage. There it is. Good. All right, and this is going to... We immediately turn this around, and this is why I like Skeleton King. 
even though they got off a successful gank on me, my reincarnation proc, and I was able to come right back. Not a problem whatsoever. We turned that into three kills for our team. No losses on our side whatsoever. The uh, difference between level 2 and level 1 reincarnation is massive. That 100 second difference is really, really high. So it's important to gain levels of Skeleton King as fast as you can. For uh, This is a good reason. Not only just because you're a carry and you need those levels, but man, that 100 seconds can make all the difference. Anyway, aside from all that, um, I'm going to get back to the items as well after I pick up my armlet. Which, there it is right there. Good. So, armlet. Core item on Skeleton King. Very, very important. Let's see what's going on here. Uh, might go aggressive on the Dazzle. I do pop Soul Ring, but he barely gets out of range. Just barely gets out of range for I'm able to, uh, I'm able to get it off on him. So uh, good on him for knowing when, when to back up. Earlier he did not know when to back up, and he nearly paid for it. Anyway, uh, Armlet, inc incredibly important item on Skeleton King, and I'll explain why. This gives you all the stats that you need to kill somebody. Damage, attack speed, armor, HP regen, gives you uh, defensive stats as well. Uh, but what this item does, when you activate it, you get a lot of bonus stats. I'm going to take a break for this team fight real quick. Looks like we might go aggressive on these guys. I did throw out a stun, but the slaughter managed to stun both uh, myself and Axe. Uh, arrow going down the Axe, this could be... No, they're not going to engage on this, and I think we're going to go and back off from the fight. Perfectly fine. I'm going to go and teleport to mid because I see that there's some action happening at Rashan, so I want to go and back these guys up. Looks like the Ursa was going for a Rashan. And they're managing to chase him away, so that's all good and fine. And again, nobody farm in this lane, so I say, hey, I'm going to come down here and get some of this for myself. So, back to the armlet. Whenever I activate the armlet, it's going to give me a lot of bonus stats. Huge bonus stats. 31 damage, 10 attack speed, 25 strength. Just You, you become a beast when you turn this thing on, but drains 37 health points per second. That can be bad. However, with uh, Skeleton King's Vampiric Aura, it's going to negate a lot of the HP loss per second that you take from turning your armlet on. Notice how before I picked up a single level in Vampiric Aura, I maxed out my critical strike. Uh, you don't have to do this. Like, if you feel the need that some lifesteal is going to help you, you don't have to max this out. This is more of an aggressive build. I feel like I'm far enough ahead in the game where I can max this out without having to worry about, you know, sustainability. But now that I have this maxed out, I'm definitely going to go ahead and get my Vampiric Aura to its highest level as well. So Armlet... Whenever you take this HP loss, you're going to negate most of it with your lifesteal. And as the game goes on, uh, next item that I might want to pick up is going to be a Heart of Tarrasque, which is going to effectively let me keep my armlet on all the time. I don't even have to turn the thing off. So notice what I'm doing is I'm turning it on to clear creepways quickly, turning it off whenever I'm no longer engaging in a fight. Remember to use this item. And that being said, remember to use your items in general. If you have armlet, you have phase boots, you have soul ring, don't forget your actives. This is another thing that uh, is quite different from League of Legends. League of Legends doesn't have too many uh, active items. Very few, actually, compared to this game. I mean, you know, you might have uh, your Shirelia's Reverie and uh, your items like that in League of Legends, but that's about it. Like, I could probably count the name of items with active effects in League of Legends on one hand, while in this game, uh, I know it's at least going to take you both hands, so just something to keep in mind. And notice whenever you activate the armlet, because it gives you 25 strength, you get a sudden spike in your HP. This can be used actually to pull you out of a nasty situation. So, Slardar coming in, he's activated his dash, he's going for a stun on me. Um, I'm thinking about going aggressive on this guy, which I do. Miranda ult does go down, probably for another reason across the map. He does throw on his da uh, amplified damage. My armor is super, super low right now. I decide I don't want to fight this guy and... Ursa just picked up the Aegis. This means he can easily come in through the river and help to gank me. However, I stunned the Slaughter underneath our tower. A huge mistake by him. He's going to have to run away from this. I pop my phase boots to keep up. Get off another stun on him. It's not going to be quite enough duration for me to get in and get the last hit, but I'm going to be able to keep up with him. I need one more stun to go off, and it looks like I'm going to get it, and he does go down. Good. An example of a uh, way too aggressive play by him, and he got stunned underneath the tower, and he took way too much damage for doing so. Good heal from the Necrolite lets me turn off the armlet feeling safe. By the way, the armlet will never kill you. You'll get down to 1 HP, but you cannot die from having the armlet on. Just something to keep in mind. 
So right now I'm looking around. I'm looking for something to farm. There is nothing to farm right now. All the lanes are pushed out. I uh, really don't have much I can do at the moment. So the best thing I can probably do actually is go into the jungle possibly because uh, well the Earth is invisible, which kind of sucks. Looks like he's not going to do anything though. Tidehunter pops mana boots. Definitely a good pickup on him. Uh, team fight going down mid. I'm going to come in and try to help these guys out. Looks like they're going to be perfectly fine, though. The uh, Ricky and Axe get a really nice kill on the Zeus. No problem doing that. I do activate my armlet to do some extra damage to the tower. I'm doing a lot of damage at this point. Every time I hit that tower, it takes a big chunk off. By the way, you may have noticed I just canceled the tower's attack on me. If you attack on a friendly creep, that's going to tell the tower to uh, basically attack somebody else. That is really, really useful. You'll probably see more examples of me doing that uh, throughout the game. I didn't know this for a really long time. So while for some people watching this video that might be elementary knowledge to you, I did not know that for a really, really long time. And that is, is a huge, huge help whenever you're taking tower aggro. And uh, we're going to go and cycle top. Clear out this creep wave. I'm going to go ahead and uh, use some uh, lifesteal. Heal up off the creep wave a bit. I should have attacked a uh, friendly creep to take the tower aggro off of me, but that's okay. We're going to be able to take this tower with no problem. And uh, by the way, if you last hit a tower, you're going to get a lot of bonus gold for it. I decided to go aggressive in the Slardar. This is probably a mistake. Dazzle ult going down. Tide ultimate going down. So this tells our team that we're definitely going to go in here and fight. Really good taunt by the axe. All three of these guys are taunted. They're not going to be able to run away. I'm in here trying to stay in the thick, uh, thick of things. If I die, it's okay. Remember, I have that reincarnation. That went really, really well for us. That was a uh, uh, actually a great play by everybody there, but that was pretty damn risky. Dazzle, yet again, getting a bit too close. Pop off stun. Pop phase boots. Activate my armlet for the extra damage. He's going to go down here. There we go. Good. Managed to take him out. And this is going to be a very, very easy racks for us. So, um, at this point of the game, I hope the video is still kind of entertaining for... <laughs> Sorry guys, I was kind of trolling a little bit there. I uh, What happened was, I was under the effect of the Dazzle Poison. I turned off my armlet, which instantly put me to 1 HP, and I died to the Dazzle Poison. Uh, I'm just going to say that was intentional. You can believe me if you want to. Anyway, um, it's at the point in the game where these guys uh, pretty much cannot come back after being this behind. It's now uh, 25 and 7 in our favor. We're going to easily take this top barracks, and I'm going to immediately cycle to mid to be able to take this barracks down as well. Uh, I, I hope the video is still entertaining and informative, so I want to go and find some more things to talk about in the meantime. Um, I have a lot of gold here. I want to go ahead and finish my Heart of Tarask. At this point in the game, it's really not going to matter what we do because we're so ridiculously far ahead. But anyway, finishing up the Vampiric Aura, I'm uh, about to finish off all my skills, and then of course I'm just going to go stat levels from there. Uh, again, it's really important to emphasize that uh, I'm not going to pick up Vanguard every game. I may not even want to pick up Soul Ring every game. Uh, items like Armlet, I do believe, are core. You know, on every hero, there are certain core items you always want to get. Fight does break out. I go for the Squishy's target, which happens to be Zeus. He's going to melt almost instantly. And again, this game is pretty much over. There's not a whole lot they can really do. So, I want to explain why the enemy team had so much trouble here. Our Ricky and Axe did really well in the top lane, so props to them for doing that. The Slardar Dazzle combo didn't quite work out versus Ricky and Axe. And uh, bottom lane, the Ursa and the Morana, they basically starve each other for farm. This did not allow the Ursa to reach hard carry status, and didn't allow Morana to reach the status where she's going to be able to contribute a lot to the team. That was a huge mistake by them. This is why it's so important to where you stick with the concept that for one lane, you're going to have one farm-dependent hero. The farm-dependent hero uh, is typically going to be accompanied by a support. doesn't have to be. You, know, you can take a hero solo in a lane as well, and maybe you run something like a jungler or even something uh, like a tri-lane, which you do see sometimes. This is, again, where the mentality of League of Legends is uh, you really got to try to break out of it. If you're having trouble doing that, uh, just play more Dota. Just keep playing. You're going to see the differences. It's not like League of Legends where there is a, a ridiculously constrictive metagame that you have to follow or else you're branded a troll. You know what I'm talking about. Bruiser top, AP mid, with a ranged AD carry, support bottom, and a jungler. Dota 2 has so much more flexibility. 
it's still in the uh, beta stages, and it's early it's enough where there hasn't been really, you know, a solid uh, metagame developed, which could happen in time. But right now, um, experiment, try things, find out what works for you. Uh, but approach it with some sensibility. You know, you don't want to do something really, really silly, like have um, an anti-mage and a faceless void in the same lane. What, what those two guys are going to do, they're going to starve each other for farm, and neither of them are going to be effective uh, come later in the game whatsoever, you're probably going to lose. Ursa's just kind of trolling now. Don't do this, guys. Uh, the Ursa has not been trying to help defend the base whatsoever. He's been going for Roshan kills and jungling. He effectively threw the game for these guys. That's really, really bad. Don't ruin the other players' experiences. Uh, there, there's really no excuse for this. And, you know, talking trash in the chat, just don't do it. I, I really don't have much else to say except just don't do it. Uh, notice I have the Heart of Tarrasque picked up. Extremely good item. 40 strength for a lot of extra damage, which is also a lot of HP regen. 300 health, and the uh, passive health restored 2% per second out of battle is also really good. Notice I'm able to keep the armlet on, and I'm still regaining health because I have this item. Great combination with uh, armlet, and a great item for Skeleton King too, because he's inherently pretty tanky. So we're just kind of yeah, they're definitely trolling now, throwing carriers at us. Kill the carriers. All right. I like how they uh, grenade up in the air. That's a uh, pretty sweet effect. I like that a lot. So yeah, not a not a whole lot to be said for the actual game itself in this particular video, but I did want to show it um, for a couple of reasons. Whenever your lane is starting out kind of bad, you know how I got first blooded at level one. That was a terrible mistake. But don't give up. You know, don't don't all speak. GG. We lose. Finish in now, please. Don't have that attitude, because if you do that, yeah, you've already lost. Just, you know, keep those things in mind. Diving on the Dazzle. Don't care, I'm Skeleton King. Alright, <laughs> coming back. So yeah, uh, you know, I was able to recognize that the combination of Ursa and Miranda is not going to work out if we don't feed them, and sure enough, they paid for it in the end game. So just some things to keep in mind. Yeah, the, this game has definitely uh, ended up pretty much as a disaster for these guys. Again, have a good attitude going into this stuff. That is so important. If you die a couple times in the lane, yeah, that's bad. But don't take that as a license to come back and just keep feeding over and over again. Try your best every game that you play and try to walk away from every game learning something, whether you win or lose. Alright guys, hope you enjoyed the Skeleton King commentary. Great hero to start with, really powerful carry, you can have a lot of fun, get a lot of kills with this guy. So again, thank you guys so much for watching, and expect some more content soon. Let's take a look at the final gold graph, and uh, yeah, not too bad. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Mm, yes.